relatively slow rhythmic maneuver that begins with a climbing turn of 90 degrees. And ends with a smooth diving turn of 90 degrees. Recovering at approximately the same attitude and airspeed with which the maneuver was started. And achieving a 180 degree reversal in the direction of flight. In training, it is always done in a series of two. Get this pattern in your mind as a blueprint of what to do when you fly your first wingover series. You've lined up a road or section line to keep your bearings clear in the 180 degree change of direction. Set your trim tabs for straight and level flight acrobatic cruise at 130 knots and 1950 RPM. Select a landmark for a reference point. When your right wing is a beam of this reference point, begin a smooth climbing turn. You combine your climb and bank smoothly and continuously until the nose of the airplane reaches the highest point of the climb at approximately 45 degrees from the original heading. From this point, the nose movement continues downward in a circular path towards the horizon and the degree of bank is increased to its steepest angle when the airplane has turned to a point a beam of the original heading or this 90 degree point. This steepest angle of bank may vary, but must always be steeper than 60 degrees, but not beyond 90 degrees. As the nose passes down through the horizon at approximately this 90 degree point, and the plane has an airspeed of about 70 knots, you will start rolling out of the diving turn at the 135 degree point and recover in level flight on the 180 degree heading. Another wing over is then done in the opposite direction. Remember, you maintain constant power setting from start to finish. With that predetermined pattern you are to fly, held in your mind, keep your eyes out of the cockpit. Here's how the maneuver will look to you. Select a road or section line to help keep your bearings during the 180 degree change of direction. Adjust your trim tabs for straight and level flight. Pick out some landmark for a reference point. And when it is a beam of your wingtip, in this case the right one, apply coordinated control pressures smoothly to avoid slipping and skidding and start your climbing turn to the right. Watch the position of your reference point in relation to your plane. Your first checkpoint is the highest nose attitude. Your heading is 45 degrees from the original heading. Your reference point is at a 45 degree angle from you. A line drawn from it would bisect the angle formed by your right wing and the nose of your plane. Continuing your turn, the nose of the plane circles down toward the horizon, meeting it at your reference point when you reach a 90 degree heading. When you are a beam of the original heading at this 90 degree point, the angle of bank is at its greatest, being more than 60, but less than 90 degrees. A quick glance shows your airspeed to be approximately 70 knots. As you start rolling out of the diving turn, your next checkpoint is when your bearing is 135 degrees from your original heading. Now a line running from your reference point on the horizon bisects the angle formed by your left wing and the nose of your plane. Completing the right wing over, you are on the 180 degree heading. You then complete the series with a left wing over, which is done exactly the same way, but with opposite control pressures. 
Remember that turns to the right require more rudder than turns to the left to offset the effect of torque and slipstream. Also remember that wingovers are always done in a series of two and that before a series is started, you must make certain that the area is clear. Select a road or section line to help keep your bearings in the 180 degree change of direction. Make sure you are in straight and level flight with your reference point on your right wing tip. Then begin your wing over with a smooth climbing turn. The Chandel is a maneuver that combines a gain of altitude with a 180 degree change of direction in a maximum performance climbing turn and a precision rollout. The Chandel helps you develop coordination, orientation, and a sense of feel since you are flying your plane through continually varying attitudes and airspeed. As in wingovers to help keep your bearings in the 180 degree direction change, line up on a road or section line below. At 130 knots and 1950 RPM, set your trim tabs for straight and level flight. Then begin a smooth climbing turn. At about 90 degrees of turn from the original heading, your bank will be at its steepest angle or approximately 60 degrees. Your recovery is started just after this 90 degree position is passed. The roll in and out is done at the same rate. You finish rolling out of the turn on a heading 180 degrees opposite to that of entry. Your wing should be level and your airspeed slightly above stall, about 70 knots. Hold this attitude for a brief moment while you check your reference line. Then lower the nose smoothly to level flight attitude. The entire maneuver is done with a constant power setting. Here is how the right chandelle will look to you. You are in level flight, your nose just below the horizon. Both wings are level. Pick out a reference line to help keep your bearing. Trim your plane for level flight with an airspeed of 130 knots and 1950 RPM. Then, with a constant power setting, start a coordinated climbing turn to the right. At the 90 degree point, your right wingtip will be crossing your reference line and your angle of bank will be at its steepest, or approximately 60 degrees. Your nose is continuing its constant rise. Start your recovery just as this 90 degree point is passed by continuing to increase the angle of attack and using coordinated left rudder and aileron to roll out. At the 180 degree heading, both wings should be level. And the nose is still in a climbing attitude. Hold this attitude for a moment while you check your reference line. Then lower the nose smoothly to a level flight attitude. Remember that torque effect varies constantly during the maneuver. And since this effect increases as airspeed decreases, it is at its maximum during the rollout. And corresponding aileron and rudder pressures must be used to correct it. Pulling out of the right chandelle requires less left rudder pressure but more aileron. Conversely, rolling out of the left chandelle requires little aileron, but may require considerable right rudder pressure. How much? Only experience can answer that. Watch this correctly executed left chandelle carefully.
Now watch the movements of the controls that accomplished it. And now from your viewpoint, watch them both together. You start with a coordinated climbing turn. At the 90 degree point, your angle of bank is at its steepest. Start rolling out. At the 180 degree heading, your wings are level. Your nose still climbing. Hold this attitude momentarily. Then lower the nose to level flight. Practicing chandelles and wingovers will help you greatly in mastering more advanced maneuvers as your training progresses. 